Hi, this is Jeremy Moskowitz, 20-time Microsoft MVP in Group Policy, Desktop, and Intune Management, and I'm going to share with you how to get around this CrowdStrike thing, if you're lucky, using Active Directory and Group Policy. Again, this is not a guarantee, but it's definitely better than nothing, so I would uh, take this advice with a grain of salt, but it should work. I'm going to simulate this all the way through end-to-end. -end. Here on my endpoint here, I've got a dummy file representing the problem file, which is c 00000291sys Again, it's just dummy for me. In real life, this would be your offending file. Um, on my machine here, what I want to do is I want to simulate um, uh, well, that's, I'm going to actually perform the operation. There's two steps to do this. I'm going to give you this script that is not uh, not mine. This is by this fellow here, um, and I'll, I'll make sure to put it in the in the notes here, so that way it's very easily accessible. But the idea is that you're going to use two PowerShell scripts. I'm going to do it a little out of order. Um, the first script is going to create a safe mode boot item, and I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Notepad on my desktop here and hit paste and go to File, Save As, and save it to my desktop as Safe1, but you can't be a .txt file, you gotta go to All Files and call it Safe.ps1. Okay, that's the first trick, is that it has to be a PowerShell file. Then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna get that other file, that other script and have that kind of at the ready here. Take that whole, take that whole thing here. Once again, go into Notepad here. File, save as, and we'll call this del file one, but not .txt file. No, 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 it's got to be a .ps1. Now, they are just hanging out on the desktop to kind of get started. Okay, we're going to put them in the right place starting right now. So here on your eSales desktops where your computers are, you can create a GPO uh, and link it to the domain, or you could do it for the entire domain. Small-scale testing is always advised. So I'm going to call this safe mode start. Okay, all right. And there's going to be an order to this, and we'll do the order second, okay? I'll deal with the ordering problem in a minute. So I'm going into right-click and going to edit, editing this GPO called Safe Mode Start. We'll give this a second to catch up and get the Group Policy Editor. Now, your GPO editor is going to look different than mine. I'm using Netrix Policy Pack, which is a tool that I founded uh, and is now owned by Netrix, and I'm still the founder and CTO there. You're not going to need that for this magic trick. You're just I'm just noting that it's... Uh, your editor is going to look different than mine. Head down under Policies, uh, Windows Settings, go to Scripts, and you're going to make this a startup script, okay? And you're going to click into PowerShell Scripts and click Add and give it the script name by hitting Browse. Now, here's the magic trick here. You want to take your safe mode script on the desktop and slam it right in here. Why is that? Because this is where the actual sysfall is. So you want to put your safe mode script right there and then click open and boom. That, no parameters, no links to some outside space. You want it just clean, just like that, and you're off to the races just like that. All right? Um, you could have multiple uh, um, scripts here. I think that the better way to do it is to make order inside group policy land, which is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to leave this as not configured. Go ahead and click OK, and I'm going to close out that first GPO. Then I'm going to go and create another GPO here in eSales Desktops, which actually deletes the file. So we'll say um, delete offending file. OK, the actual name doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to right click and click edit. Watch to the end of the video to make sure you get the ordering right, because this is alphabetical order, and you actually have to perform it in a process order. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Don't just think that this is the end of it. It's not. So go back to Policies, Windows Settings, go to Scripts, go to Startup again. We're going to go to PowerShell Scripts. We're going to now add and do that same magic trick where we find the file on the desktop, hit Browse, and slam in the deletion file piece into the sysvol location right there. Click open, nice and clean, no links, no parameters, off to the races, not configured, and you're you're off to the races. Okay? Click OK. Now that's there's one more step which I've which I implied. If you click on the OU or your entire domain here, you'll see this idea called link order. Okay, notice how the link order is uh, messed up. Actually, I clicked uh, something I didn't mean to here, so let's go ahead and uncheck that. Okay, we got to make sure. Oh, actually, I have two. Um, I was experimenting with this, so I have two policies here. 
Let me go ahead and get rid of it just so you don't see it here. All right. So what you want to make sure you do is you want your safe mode start to go first. How do you do that? You use, you click on the OU or your whole domain, click on the policy you want to go first, and you make it the highest number first by using the little up and down arrow. See how the little, how it moves up and down? You want it to be the highest number. The highest number gets first in the batting order, okay? So eight runs first, seven runs second, six, and so on, okay? So actually, I'd probably go to turn off the CrowdStrike service first, okay? Give that a shot. Then go to safe mode start, then delete offending file. If that doesn't work, you're welcome to move this down the line too. Again, I have no way to actually fully perform this operation. So now that I've got turn off, nope, I've got it wrong. I want safe mode start first. There we go. Safe mode start first. Then I want to delete the offending file. Finally, uh, uh, couldn't hurt to turn off the CrowdStrike service. Again, this could be first or last. It doesn't matter. But the point of this video is that you want safe mode start to be the highest in the batting order. So it turns on safe mode, then deletes the offending file, then turns off the CrowdStrike service. But wait, you're still not done, right? Because what's going to happen is that every single time this computer starts up, it's going to keep trying to smash itself into safe mode and reboot every freaking time. So that's not good. So I figured out a way to get around that problem as well. I'm going to also post this in the notes. Don't flip out when you see this. What this is, is testing for the offending file, okay? So said another way, you only need to do the safe mode start and the deleting the offending file if the offending file is still there, okay? So I'm actually just going to put it onto the, the single safe mode start one. You could probably do it on both. Don't worry, this will be in the notes. Just note that it has a single tick mark, not quotes, and it has double backslashes anywhere you would think there would be a single backslash, okay? We're going to take this guy, copy it. You're going to head over down at the way bottom of the group policy list called WMI filters. And this is like a testing thing. So you're going to right click in WMI filters and click new. And you're going to say when offending file doesn't exist. Okay. Okay. So in other words, only uh, well, it does exist rather. When the offending file does exist, you only need to reboot when it does exist. So we're going to click on add paste in the query that you don't have to worry about. I've done the work for you. Go ahead and click OK and click Save. So this is just setting up the test and you're going to marry that test to the GPO. Go ahead and click back on Safe Mode Start and you only need to, need to do the Safe Mode Start when the WMI filter of when the offending file does exist. So said another way, you're going to go to Safe Mode Start for your eSales desktops. Make sure authenticated users is here because that means users and computers. And then when the offending file does exist, that's when the safe mode is going to start. Otherwise, you're going to be in this kind of constant reboot hell. So with that in mind, let me show you that my, uh, let me go ahead and revert back because I was doing some testing with the camera off. If I were to go back to my snapshot here of before nuke, I want to show you that my file is still going to be there. Just give us two seconds to revert back out. Give me a quick second here. Okay, boom. So I'm back. There's my offending file. Okay, and now I'm ready to try this thing on for size. Now again, you may not get it to work the very first time because group policy uh, may miss the signal of downloading those uh, group policy objects um, without the network stack being fully hot. So you might have to, it might take two reboots, but I have tested this now pretty thoroughly and it does seem to work after two reboots. So let's go ahead. This is reboot uh, uh, one coming along the pike here. So let's go ahead and log on and see what the story is. So now just as a standard user, let's go ahead and see what our position is. If we were to go to CD Windows System 32 system 32 drivers and take a look. Okay, file is not there, so we're not automatically rebooting a million times. So you may see it may work magically the first time. It may take two reboots, but what's not going to happen is you're not going to be in constant reboot hell either because of the problem at hand or because you've self-inflicted it by using the safe mode boot group policy setting. So let's let's review, make sure we got it straight. Here's your 
OU, here are your GPOs. You've got your safe mode start. That's going to go first in the batting order with the highest number, but you're going to make sure that that puppy isn't going to do it every single time by using the WMI filter that we created that says only do it if you see the offending file. Then the second piece of the puzzle is you're going to um, then delete the offending file second and then also optionally turn off the CrowdStrike service. That, my friend, should probably get you out of this jam. Hope this helps you out. And if you're looking to do any group policy training or interested in my group policy book, head on over to gpanswers.com, also known as MDM Answers, MDM and gpanswers.com. Thank you very much. Hope this works out for you.